If you add a protein chain to your analysis project, it will be described as a chain, which contains residues, which are of a particular residue type, and in turn contain atoms. So equally, looking at it the other way up, you can say that each atom is seen as belonging to a particular residue, residue type, and chain. We write these as chain.residue.residue-type.atom. This is also referred to as the project ID or PID of an atom. In practice, this might look like this, a.46.ala.ha. In parallel to this, we denote an NMR chain, NMR residue with residue type and NMR atom. We use these as placeholders to describe and hold on to the information we have about an atom from our spectra before we know which actual atom of our protein chain this corresponds to. The NMR chain can refer to any set of grouped residues. The residues don't have to be connected or ordered in any way, they may just all belong to the same protein. But there may also be small stretches of linked residues. You can have as many NMR chains as you want. An NMR residue is basically a random temporary number which we use until we know what the real residue number is. The residue type may or may not be known, depending on the information we can obtain from our spectra. The NMR atom may refer to a single atom or to a group of atoms, such as a methylene or methyl group. NMR chains, residues and atoms are denoted in the same way as real chains, residues and atoms. NMR chain dot NMR residue dot residue type dot NMR atom. And an example might be at one dot at 72 dot ala dot h at 34. If one part of the project ID is no, not known, such as the residue type, this is simply left blank. We have a number of conventions for NMR chain, residue and atom names. At always denotes something as being temporary, a temporary list or chain of residues, a temporary residue number, or a temporary atom name. For NMR atom names, we have quite specific conventions. So the NMR atom name should always start with a nucleus, such as H at 31 or C at 156. Percent means any number, so HB percent would be a beta methylene or methyl group. H percent would be the backbone NH3 group. An asterisk means any string. H asterisk would be any proton in the residue. Names starting with M and Q are pseudoatom names. Number suffixes follow the NEF and therefore IUPAC convention. So serine HB2 or HB3 will denote stereospecific assignments. The suffixes X and Y are used for non-stereospecific pairs. So in the case of serine beta protons, you would use HBX and HBY. For isopropyl groups, the X and Y assignments match up between 1H and 13C. So leucine HDX percent are the methyl protons bound to leucine CDX. A hash refers to a connected or ordered list of residues. So if you are able to link your NMR residues based on your spectral information, they would be placed in an NMR chain beginning with a hash. Finally, you can denote an NMR residue as preceding another one by adding minus one to it. It is important to remember that the minus one designation is treated as a string, as text, and denotes a connection. It's not a numerical or mathematical link. So you may, for instance, have a real protein chain, and in parallel, you may have an NMR chain. You may have been able to assign an NMR chain of linked residues to your real protein chain. Now what happens to your AT72-1 NMR residue? If AT72 is in fact alanine 46, then surely AT72-1 must be lysine 45. In fact, it is matched to alanine 46-1. That calculation 46-1 isn't actually performed. You can, at a later stage, perhaps when you want to deposit your shifts, for example, merge 46 minus 1 with 45. But that is a step that can't be undone. So 46 minus 1 
doesn't mean 45, it means the predecessor of 46. And so when you make your assignments, the NMR atoms in your NMR chain now become the same as the real protein chain. An NMR atom is defined as being assigned when its label matches an atom label. You can find your chains and NMR chains in the sidebar with residues and atoms nested beneath them. There are many easy tools available to edit existing or create new NMR atoms, residues and chains. Remember that NMR atoms are essentially just labels. They are, however, unique, as one label denotes one real thing, a real atom with a spin and a chemical shift. And so the same label should always be used whenever you know it is the same spin causing a peak or restraint. So how do you work with NMR atoms and residues in your spectra and with your peaks? In a spectrum, each dimension of a peak is associated with a chemical shift, which in turn is associated with a particular atom. So in the 2D HSQC, for example, each peak has one dimension belonging to a hydrogen atom and one to a nitrogen atom. Therefore, in the absence of an assignment, each of these two peak dimensions is associated with one NMR atom. Of course, the HSQC spectrum is such that we know that those two atoms have to be bonded to one another and belong to the same residue. Therefore, the NMR chain and NMR residue numbers are the same for both dimensions, and only the NMR atom names differ. Analysis would typically abbreviate the peak label for such a peak to at 2.at72.h, n in order to save space. Now we may have a second spectrum, and there we may have a peak, one of whose dimensions is associated with the same real atom as our HSQC peak, so it is then given the same NMR atom label. If several peaks are assigned to the same NMR atom, then the chemical shifts from these peaks are averaged to give an average chemical shift for that NMR atom, or once it is assigned, for that atom.